We're making paper mache. Paper mache? We're in the middle of the day. <laughs> pour all of it in the bowl. You pour it all in the bowl. I did it. Good job. All right, good job mixing, Addy. Good job mixing, Jacob. Great work. Let's see, let's see that mix, Addy. Go ahead, mix, mix, mix. Jacob, you too, keep mixing. Put this one on for me. Go ahead, put it all it's up on that. It smells like, it smells like pancakes. Cause you wanna know why? Pancakes are made out of flour and water, isn't that silly? All right, so I'm sure you guys are wondering why did you just spend a couple minutes there watching Jeff's kids make paper mache with him? Well, I promise you there's a point and it is a, a Revit based point. And so uh, we're gonna get into it. So the first first point was, uh, I just kind of wanted you guys to see how super cute my kids are. <laughs> and so hopefully you, uh, you enjoyed that. The second point has to do with today's video. I've been talking about this idea of using a mass, a conceptual massing model like I did in the previous episode. And then the next step being skinning the mass. And so I've been talking about this since I think my first ebook in 2012, this process that I use. And so I thought the paper mache was actually a great metaphor for for this process. So if you remember our last video, uh, we created a conceptual mass of our party diagram, right? Well, that mass is our balloon. And now during my process, what I do is I'll take that mass, usually I'll actually print it out and I'll sketch on top of it to start filling in details of maybe what the elevations are going to look like and so on and so forth. But then I'll actually skin it, which is our <laughs> paper mache. I know this is supposed to be a bowl, but what are you going to do there? two and four years old. <laughs> but essentially, right, this is our skin, okay? And so there's two ways we can do it. You can use, you can actually apply your, your Revit walls, doors, and windows to the mass using like wall by face, or you can actually draw around it. Unless you're creating Zaha buildings or crazy slanted walls and stuff, I actually don't suggest usually using the, the pick wall, um, which I'm gonna do in the first part of this video. Um, I actually just suggest drawing walls and using your mass as a guide and so that's what we're going to do today so in the very first video so as we're going through this video <laughs> remember the paper mache remember our mass and remember how we're using it now to actually define the objects that are going to become revit walls doors and windows as we continue on this design so without further ado let's jump into it episode two of the modern barn series let's do it So before we jump into Revit, I did want to mention, you'll notice what I do for the walls and the roof for this project, for this particular scheme of this project, is I'm using wall by face and I'm selecting my mass, so I'm skinning the project. With a, a shape like this, a lot of times I will just draw the walls and, and using the clip, typical click, 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 sort of, you know, what you normally would do and just use the mass as a guide. But because we have this sort of Scandinavian modern shadow box looking profile, um, when you do wall by face, and you actually do the roof and the walls, what you'll notice is that it actually cleans up really neatly around all the edges. And so that's the reason why I did it for this particular scheme. What you're gonna see as the project evolves is we're gonna have a typical gabled roof with overhangs. And so we're actually gonna go back to just clicking and, and, and going through. So just, just to let you know, uh, I mentioned before that if it's a Zaha building is the only time you really need to pick faces. Like if it's a non-coplanar, angular, all that stuff. Um, this is another example where if you wanna have that sort of Scandinavian Scandinavian clean profile of that sort of house shape or something like that um, doing using wall by face and then using the walls and the roofs and you could see it's gonna clean up really nicely so just just before we jump in I wanted to, to throw that disclaimer in there now let's jump in Revit and let's start modeling this barn so what you'll see right away is I took my schematic mass or my concept mass and I put it on um, existing face and then I demolished it in new construction. So this way um, it disappears in the rest of it. You could technically throw it in a design option, but that might get a little ugly as you're doing wall by face. So for this, I just did phasing. I put it in the existing, I demolished it in new construction. 
what I'm doing here is I'm just making that wall type. So I didn't have this particular wall type set up in the project. So I'm making it a two by four with um, a two by or two by six stud wall with um, sheathing and then um, three quarters or an inch and a half of vertical siding. So, um, and then of course I'm cleaning up the wraps or the edges um, because um, uh, the wrapping at ends, I should say, um, because you can see as I pick by wall by face, it's gonna go all the way around and it's gonna look nice on the ends. Now you'll notice as I'm doing this, this is what I was talking about with that whole cleanup. Um, so I'm using wall by face and I'm actually doing the roof and the walls using that wall by face tool. This is very specific to this type of shape that I'm trying to make. So then it makes a nice continuous, um, sh a nice continuous shape and you can see it there. Notice how the walls clean up real nice. And now I'm just joining the different sections. So we had the front section, the middle section and the back section. So just using the join tool to join all these so that it makes a nice clean Align, and then I aligned the surface patterns uh, between them all. Now just using a floor tool to, um, to add in a concrete slab. Notice I'm just drawing it in um, and then offsetting it a couple feet or whatever it is. Um, here I'm not using any pick, by, pick wall or anything. I'm just uh, using the shapes that I already have there. I'm going to place in some foundation walls that go right along with the, the walls uh, above it. There you go, you can start to see there's our shape, there's our walls. And now I'm gonna throw in a curtain wall. So a lot of times when I do these bigger curtain walls, especially in the schematic design phase, um, what I'll do is I'll use just the curtain wall one, which is a blank slate um, curtain wall. You see I'm gonna also, I'm unjoining it here so that it can clean up nicely. Um, unjoining it there so it doesn't dive into the, into the inside. And now you'll also notice that for this particular option, I end up modifying the profile of all the walls. The reason for that is if you remember, I'm using wall by face, so my roof is actually a wall. Well, you can't attach uh, walls to a wall and it does you know, the typical thing. So you have to do um, uh, extrusions or you have to modify the extrusion of the wall. And this is why I like to use, especially in schematic design, I like to use the curtain wall one because then I can put a blank slate and I'm just using the curtain grid tool to just pop in a whole bunch of curtain grids um, and then easily add mullions to those grids and then I can play with it. So it becomes really flexible. As you develop the project, maybe you want that to be a specific three foot grid um, and then you do the verticals um, or maybe, maybe you have verticals and horizontals built into it. But you could see how quickly you're able to generate this and start making that shape that I was talking about, which is that sort of Scandinavian modern house look. On this side is the garage doors. Um, so we're actually gonna do a horizontal siding here with a, 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 an all glass garage door. Um, so I'm just putting a wall in there. Realize that I didn't have a wall type for this built into this specific template um, uh, for what I started. So I'm just throwing in there a four inch horizontal um, clapboard siding. Again, I can't attach to the roof like you normally would in most cases. So I'm just doing a quick um, edit extrusion of the walls. Trim, 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 trim around there. <laughs> Picking the edges and you can see now I've got this vertical or horizontal siding. Let's add the deck in the front. Notice I have um, my phasing set to show all so I can see that reference, which is my concept mass um, below, even though it's demoed. And I'm using that as a guideline. And you can see there's my, there's my decking right here. I'm gonna bring back the columns. Um, I'm gonna take them out of getting uh, demoed and keep them to, uh, to existing, uh, keep them to, so that they show in the new, new construction. And of course, what's a deck without some wood framing underneath it? So I'm just quickly drawing in some two by 12s using the structural tab and Revit. And I'm uh, just gonna clean that up a little bit. So just moving the columns to, to the ends a little bit so it looks more like a deck. Remember this is schematic design, so I'm just gonna give them the idea of what's going on, but don't need to go fully into it. Here I'm putting my interior two by four walls in. Again, similar to outside. Um, for some reason, there was an offset on the base. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, so same as the outside, I have to do um, modify the, the, the profile of the walls. And then you can see I'm just using pick line to get that, to get that um, roof edge. Now the fun part begins where I get to draw the, dr the driveway in. This was in Revit 2022 at the time. Um, so I'm, I'm using uh, the old topography tools. So uh, I'm just going through and sketching in um, a subregion. Uh, that represents this driveway. Um, notice what I do here is I do one side of it, get all the all the arcs in place, and then I do an offset for the width, a little tip there, um, putting in a little spot for the turnaround, rounding off all the edges a little bit. There's the offset. Again, clean up the edges. 
And then my favorite part of the topography tool, if you click finish, boom, subregions overlap. So I'm sure everyone runs into this. Here's a quick tip. Instead of pressing cancel and losing your whole sketch, I'm copying everything I just did. Then I'm gonna delete it and say no. I'm gonna find the, the subregion I'm overlapping with, which was actually the, the, the overall site there. And I'm going to uh, paste in that sketch so that I can um, so that so that I can I can pull in the the outline from the other one. So little tip there, if you run into that that issue where you get overlapping, you don't have to especially after you do a whole sketch, you don't have to delete the whole sketch. You can copy it, cancel that certain that specific sketch, go into the one that's overlapping, and figure out what's going on. Here I'm just cleaning up some of the some of the exterior walls. Uh, you can start seeing how that that shape is really forming. Now it's time to put the lean to on the side. Um, this this project's gonna have a lean to, and you can see it there. Um, I'm just using again using my mass as a guideline. Um, you see, I just sketched right over the mass, setting a little roof slope. It's just slooped on one side. And now I'm gonna make a corrugated metal material here, a corrugated metal roof as well. Making a custom pattern here which is just a two inch vertical pattern, give it a nice little gray scale, and now it'll look good in, in, uh, in our elevations as well. Check the height of that roof. Now I'm gonna put in some structural beams. This is schematic design, so I, I do wanna start putting in some detail, but really just detail to the point where you understand the, what I'm trying to get at, like what, what we're trying to look for as far as style, as far as some of the materiality and structure. And so this, the idea here is that it's a corrugated metal roof sitting on top of some raw lumber with columns. It's got this little little bit of an industrial piece. I mean, it is a barn, right? I, and so, uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing here is just putting in three two by 10s or two by 12s. Uh, and then I'm gonna toss in some columns underneath it and just give that idea of sort of this, this, uh, this really agricultural feel of a, of a, a rusty uh, a corrugated metal sitting on top of simple simple wooden wood beams. And here I'm just placing those columns in, just, just figuring out what kind of spacing I want to do, how many columns I want to do. Um, you'll see a lot of this in, if you haven't watched yourself back uh, working uh, in Revit. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different temporary dimensions being used in equals just to see like what you want to do with it. And here's here's kind of what we're getting at. Now we're gonna look at this elevation. There's gonna be a few punched windows and there's gonna be a, a door. Um, and so just playing with the rhythm and the size of these. Uh, you know, again, a lot of times I, I will have sketched while I'm doing this. I might print these things out and sketch over it. I might just have my, my notebook on the side. So as much as I'm doing design in Revit, I'm also doing design on my sketchbook and my notebook uh, on the side. Here I'm just making a new window type. Notice I duplicated and then I renamed it the actual size. I didn't just keep it the same size with the number two after it. So always check and always name your stuff nicely. Again, using temporary and permanent dimensions to equalize and space things out just to, to get things set up. Remember, this is the one story option. What you'll see as this project evolves is we elevate into a two story option, overhanging roof and stuff. So this is just option number one. Notice the door goes into that flex space we were talking about on both sides. So you can come in from the lean-to or from the house side. So now we're back on the inside. What I'm doing here is I'm putting a pad in. And in this particular case, I'm using a pad um, as the gravel under the slab. So it's cutting the, 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 the topography, but it's also acting as the gravel in the, in, the, in the sections. And so different ways that you can use uh, pads. And obviously, if you're using 2024, there's no pads anymore. So we won't go down that road. But... Uh, here I'm just modifying the materials of those columns to be sort of a black uh, a black metal material. I also mirrored the doors and windows there. And then finally, just for the sake of the visualizations of the schematic design, um, the idea was to have trusses, uh, uh, some sort of uh, heavy timber looking trusses. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually model the trusses. So I just loaded a truss family in. You can see there it is there. It's your standard Fink truss, I believe. And uh, I'm just changing it to two by fours and two by sixes. And again, this is schematic design, but you know you can use these tools to to make this stuff really efficiently. I know a lot of people would just go right in and do like an extrusion of a truss. There's no reason to. Like you have this profile, why not use it? It's very simple. And you can see all it's doing is giving me the shape of the Fink truss, and I can put whatever um, structural materials I want on it. What you will see is I will use a a plate, an out of the box steel plate, to 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 sort of make it look a little neater in the in the renderings and in the elevations. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just loading in a, a little uh, four by four uh, steel plate. This is out of the box. You saw I just loaded that in from 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 the Autodesk um, 
Revit family's cloud thing. <laughs> and now I'm just gonna make sure that it's on both sides of the truss and I'm gonna copy that along there. And so just to give the idea, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to do some sort of a truss. We wanna have some sort of steel showing um, and then we want it to, to multiply along the, the, uh, the space uh, on the inside. So that's all I'm doing here is just aligning the work planes, uh, taking it, copying it to the other area. And then now I've got myself a little group that I can make of truss and plate all together. And then I can take that along uh, the whole rest of the, the space. So I just made a group out of it. I can use an array. I can copy the group depending on how, I, how you want to do it. I think here I'm copying the group mainly because I wanted a specific uh, spacing within the, the larger space. But um, again, this is schematic design. So we just want this to be there. Just adjusting the spacing here. Now you can see we've got our truss. All right, y'all. So there we have it. Episode two of the Modern Barn series. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, in the next episode, we are going to be jumping into twin motion and building our world to present to our client um, to actually fill in some of these details and continue developing our model and our design. So just remember, if you use this method of conceptually modeling, whether you're using a mass or whether you're using an in-place family like I did in this episode, if you do end up doing a wall by face, you need to keep that mass, okay? Just like in the paper mache example, because once you get rid of that mass, you can no longer control the walls. So keep that in mind, unless you're doing a Zaha building, there's no need to. So with that, and we're gonna jump into uh, episode three coming up soon of the Modern Barn series. Thanks for tuning in.